If you looked at the previous high from um, April of 2021, you can see you draw this trend line across. And one of the things I was noticing is how you broke above and you closed above this level, and then you came right back in. And then again, later on, it tried to break up, and again, it failed. You never got two consecutive closes higher above this high pivot. Now, to me, that screams double top. It also screams institutional uh, investors and whales selling into it. Hey guys, welcome back to The Daily Crypto. Today we have Gareth Soloway, whose $20,000 Bitcoin price fallout forecast appears to have been vindicated as he speaks on his next key price target as he predicts Bitcoin's next pullback from its current $20,000 price standpoint. Soloway went on to explain, using charts and technical analysis, that 20K is Bitcoin's short-term price floor and that he anticipates a rebound to 25K to 30K in the next three to six weeks. Over the past 50 years, inflation has already lowered the price of the US dollar by 85%, bolstering the case for Bitcoin as a viable alternative to fiat money. In November 2021, after Bitcoin reached an all-time high of 69,000, it began to plummet. Around the same period, the US dollar's purchasing power versus BTC began to rise, peaking in late November 2021 and then falling again in March 2022. With no further ado, Let's head straight at Garrett Soloway's Bitcoin price prediction. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. If you looked at the previous high from um, April of 2021, you can see you draw this trend line across. And one of the things I was noticing is how you broke above and you closed above this level, and then you came right back in. And then again, later on, it tried to break up, and again, it failed. You never got two consecutive closes higher above this high pivot. Now, to me, that screams double top. It also screams institutional uh, investors and whales selling into it, because if you looked at the kind of the hype and the bullishness of the retail investor, this should have been off to the races and just blowing to the upside. I mean, massive move up. And it wasn't. And you have to be as a trader, someone who steps back and says, wait a minute, what's going on here? Why isn't this you know, shooting to the upside? Why does it keep coming down under that level? A couple other things that were kind of bothering me. Number one, um, you had to look at kind of the hype in terms of like the Super Bowl, right? So into February of this year, when we were already off those highs, there were so many Super Bowl commercials. That was an issue for me, mainly because, and again, we're talking crypto commercials, because in 2000 with the dot-coms, it was known as the dot-com Super Bowl with amazing amounts of, of commercials for dot-coms. And we know what happened after. Notably, the USD's purchasing power against BTC has been rising for most of the year. The same is true for Bitcoin's inflation hedging narrative. Furthermore, the ongoing difficulties around market volatility and the high price of a single BTC unit cause friction for investors, particularly novices. Bitcoin's only 13 years old. It started in 2009, and then you compare it to gold. Gold's been used as a store of value for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So on a maturity basis, Bitcoin is a 13-year-old. Gold is like the 120-year-old, the oldest person in the world. You know, the, the amount of knowledge and kind of stability that gold brings is why you don't see the crazy moves in gold that you see in Bitcoin. Now, eventually, as Bitcoin gets older and, and, a bit, and is adopted, right, so more and more people use it, it will then start to mature into that more safe asset that actually offsets inflation and is a kind of a store of safety. So I think that's the key is that just understand that a new asset, you still don't have a ton of big money in there, which actually works as a stabilizing force. I know people always say, oh. While Gareth isn't fully pessimistic about Bitcoin, he also doesn't appear to be overly optimistic about its short-term prospects. According to him, the currency is on its way to the 12K area, but it will take time. Gareth believes that before the bears charge again, BTC's price will need to rise to roughly 25,000 to 30,000. When this happens, the coin will plummet all the way to the 12K area. In a bull market, yes, you don't have to do any work. You can just sit back and make money. But bear markets are really where the best traders in the world are showcased. And if you want to make money in a bear market, you can go long and short at various times. But you have to be able to read the charts to be safe. And again, it is a tough environment to trade, but there are absolutely opportunities. 
He goes on to claim that markets do not react to people's emotions. The majority now believes that Bitcoin will hold at 20,000, but markets have a habit of blowing past stop losses in order to confuse investors. There's always opportunity. And, and I'll be honest with you, like, you know, I was short at the highs. I didn't hold all the way down to the lows. That's not the type of trader I am. Um, but there have been multiple periods where I've gone short and long Bitcoin in a bear market. And I think the biggest thing about a bear market, whether it's stocks, commodities or crypto, is you have to remember it becomes more of a trader's market. So it's not a market where you just close your eyes throw a dart at the dartboard and just make money, right? You actually have to do a little work here. Interestingly, Gareth believes that the Bitcoin price will soar beyond 20,000 during the next two to four weeks. Gareth may be missing a crucial point based on present market circumstances and general anticipation of what is to follow. For one thing, there have been strong indications that the crypto market is poised to enter what has been nicknamed crypto winter, in which bears gain control for a lengthy period of time. A similar situation occurred in 2019 when BTC plummeted to 3,000. Let's hear what Gareth Soloway has to say about it. I do think we get a significant bounce off of this 20,000 Pierce level. And again, I mean, the obvious one that everyone was talking about was the 20,000 high from 2017 here. It was just sub 20,000. We did pierce that. That's very normal. So if you're a new trader or someone that doesn't understand this, think about this. Everyone, once we got close to 20,000, everyone started to say, okay, it's going to 20,000 and then that's going to be the low. So what ended up happening is investors bought just above 20,000, which created us, you know, if you remember before he pierced 20,000, it kind of stayed there for a little while and bounced a little bit. And However, according to Gareth Soloway, this tendency will reverse in the next two to three years and BTC will reach 65,000. Gareth's views on a BTC recovery over that time period might be influenced by market moves associated with a Bitcoin network having. From this drop, and you can see this was pretty much a vertical drop. This is where Terra Luna collapsed. This is about a $14,000 drop on Bitcoin. If you take the high here and drop 14,000, you actually get the almost to the penny low right there. And again, that refers to a measured move, meaning this drop is equal to this drop as well. You then take into account, you have this pivot low right here. You've got a nice reversal green candle. And my guess is Bitcoin has upside to about- With inflation reaching record highs, many are flocking to anything that might serve as a hedge against inflation. Despite this, Bitcoin is frequently seen as an inflation resistant asset. An enthusiast frequently portrayed as an asset class uncorrelated with real world assets. However, things quickly become complicated when you discover that each cryptocurrency is unique and some are meant to inflate. Many crypto enthusiasts many times more often argue that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are decentralized and cannot be shut down, so they are not affected by the inadequacy of central banks or governments. Now let's hear what Gareth Soloway says about it. Bitcoin plummeted after inflation hit 40-year highs in December 2021. Without the benefit of hindsight, it is difficult to assess if Bitcoin is a long-term inflation hedge. Because of Bitcoin's limited quantity, some advocates compare it to digital gold, a reference to the yellow metal, another popular inflation-resistant asset. Stores of value assets withstand the passing of time because they are uncorrelated with other assets and are immune to market interference. But are cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin truly an inflation hedge? Is it tr the best traders in the world are never bulls or bears. They're never perma bulls or perma bears, right? Perma meaning they're always bearish or always bullish. The best traders are just looking at the charts and the charts tell us what the probability of the move is going to be. So when we see a high probability setup, whether it's up or down, that's when we take the trade. And again, it could be up or down. Doesn't really matter to us. We just want to be on the right side with the highest probability. So taking the long term rise into consideration, do you think we would see an upside price target of 25,000 in the coming weeks? Comment down below your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe. This is The Daily Crypto. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.